Right, the final task on our to-do list for this simulation was to determine some mechanical design parameters for the two distillation columns. We wanted to figure out the column diameter, the column pressure drop, and also some information around column hydraulics. We had said that we're going to be using sieve trays, and so let's figure out whether there's some tools within Unisim that we can use to help us with this process. As it happens, there are. If we go to the tools menu, and if we go to the utilities option just here with the hammer and screwdriver by it, we have an available set of correlations for all sorts of things. One of which is tray sizing. This utility will not only calculate the size of distillation column trays, but it will also calculate things like tower diameters and tower heights as well. We need one utility per column that we're examining. So we'll need two utilities, one for T101, one for T103. This utility can only be used for rigorous simulation columns. It can't be used for shortcut columns and it can't be used for component splitters. So let's add the utility. Its default name is tray sizing one. So we're going to name that T101 calculations. Again, follow the traffic light system. It says it requires a tray section. So select tray section here. We're looking at T101 and there's an object hierarchy here. The set of stages is called main tray stage. And so we're just gonna select that. For the time being, what we're going to do is use the auto section tool for this. So we're gonna say we've got a sieve tray. We've got the default design here, maximum tray flooding 85%. We actually said we're gonna design for 70%, so we'll just reduce that to 70 and we'll complete auto section. And the traffic light has gone from red to green. And if we click the performance, we can see that we've got a section diameter of about 1.4 meters, that that has been arrived at by considering about 71.5% of approach to flooding. And it gives you the height of that trade section in T101, it's about nine meters. That's not the same as the column height because we need to add in vapor disengagement space at the top of the column. We need to have a suitable um, reboil disengagement space at the bottom plus a column sump for a bit of liquid holdup. We also need some disengagement space around the column feed such that if it becomes two phase, it can suitably flash. So the section height is not the column height but it gives you a very good steer as to what fraction of the column height will be taken up by the trays. There's lots of other information here pertaining to the design of a sieve tray. So you've got, for example, your weir loadings, you've got, for example, your weir spacings and your weir heights, and you've also got the section pressure drop. And we can see here that the section pressure drop is 4.2 kPa, 0 0.04 bar. Now this very nicely justifies our assumption that the reboiler and the condenser were effectively running at the same pressures. So some very, very useful mechanical design information can be very easily obtained using the Unisim utilities. These should be backed up with your own hand calculations mm -hmm. to check what the process simulator is giving you, but at least you know what answer to expect from those hand calculations. And if they differ wildly, it's time to pick into it in a little bit more detail to see why they differ wildly. So let's recap that by examining the same thing for T103. So I'm going to add a utility. It's going to be the tray sizing utility. I'm going to rename it T-103 calculations. It requires a tray section, so I'm going to select that tray section. It's going to come from T103, and it's the main tray section. Auto section. We're using sieve trays. We're designing to 70% of tray flooding. We complete auto section. And we see in the performance that this section is also about a similar diameter, it's 1.2 meters as opposed to 1.3 meters. So these two columns are going to be physically very similar in terms of their diameter. Section height, of course, is taller because it's got more trays. It's 11 and a half meters. 
and our section pressure drop is 0 0.05 bar. Again, justifying the assumption that our condenser and our reboiler are effectively running at the same pressure. So again, there's a lot of other useful pieces of design information here. We've got information pertaining to our weirs. We've got information pertaining to our tray configuration. So a very quick and very easy way to get some mechanical design information from Unisim. Okay, now that you've completed the second tutorial, let's go and recap some of the important points that were made in each of the five videos. So the first thing is that shortcut columns are used to get design information for rigorous columns. And we'll see, and you have seen, that the column geometry that you get from a shortcut column is very different to that of the optimized column geometry that you obtain after you've gone through the rigorous modeling process. We use component splitters because we needed to remove methane as a contaminant before running the shortcut column. And so that was the use of a component splitter in a detailed design workflow that just helps us to manipulate the feed slightly to more realistic conditions, given that the leftover methane was in effect a, an aberration. The initial convergence of a rigorous column is almost certainly not going to give you the design specifications that you need. And so what we did was to reconverge the distillation columns to our design specification. Now, when we did that, if you recall, we incrementally changed the column specifications and made it an easy job for the numerical solvers to perform that reconvergence. We didn't give the final design specification as the next thing that the simulator sought in terms of a numerical solution. So work with the simulator, not against the simulator, when it comes to gaining convergence. The final thing that we saw was how an upstream column can affect a downstream column. So when you're struggling to converge a distillation column at the design specification you require, and if that distillation column happens to be in a sequence, always look upstream. Your problem may not be in the column that you're dealing with. It may have inherited the problem from elsewhere. So always look at your distillation sequence or sometimes your reaction and distillation sequence in a fairly broad context in order to troubleshoot the unit operations.